Hallelujah. May God, who raised Jesus from the dead, grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Alleluia. God, you sent your Son into the world that we might live through him. May we abide in his risen life so that we may love one another as he first loved us and know the fullness of joy. Amen. So the book we're going to read now is called The Quilt Maker's Gift, and the authors are Jeff Brumbo and Gail DeMarkey. Here's the cover of the book. And we'll start. There was once a quilt maker who kept a house in the blue misty mountains up high. Even the oldest great grandfather could not recall a time when she was not up there, sewing away day after day. Here and there, and wherever the sun warmed the earth, it was said she made the prettiest quilts anyone had ever seen. The blues seemed to come from the deepest part of the ocean, the whites from the northernmost snows, the greens and purples from the abundant wildflowers, the reds, oranges, and pinks from the most wonderful sunsets. So see, here's where she is on her mountain. Some said there was magic in her fingers. Some whispered that her needles and cloth were gifts of the bewitched. And others said the quilts really fell to earth from the shoulders of passing angels. Many people climbed her mountain, pockets bursting with gold, hoping to buy one of the beautiful quilts. But the woman would not sell them. I give my quilt to those who are poor or homeless, she told all who knocked on her door. They're not for the rich. You can see we have a line of people who come up to her mountain to get her quilts. On the darkest and coldest nights, the woman would make her way down the mountain to the town below. There she would wander the cobblestone streets until she came upon someone sleeping outside in the chill. She would then take a newly finished quilt from her bag, wrap it around their shivering shoulders, tuck them in tight, and tiptoe away. Then, the next morning, with a steaming cup of blackberry tea, she would begin a new quilt. And again, it's nighttime. Now, at this time, there also lived a very powerful and greedy king who liked nothing better than to receive presents. The hundreds and thousands of beautiful gifts he got for Christmas and his birthday were never enough. So a law was passed that the king would celebrate his birthday twice a year. When that still wasn't enough, he ordered his soldiers to search the kingdom for those few people who had not yet given him a gift. Over the years, the king had come to own almost all of the prettiest things in the world throughout the castle, from top to bottom, in drawers and on shelves, in boxes and trunks and closets and sacks. All of the king's countless things were stored. See? All those gifts falling out of the king's house. So many. Things that shimmered and glittered and glowed. Things whimsical and practical. Things mysterious and magical. So many, many things that the king kept a list of all the lists of things that he owned. And again, see all the belongings that the king had. So many things. And yet, with all these marvelous treasures to enjoy, the king never smiled. 
he was not happy at all. Somewhere, there must be one beautiful thing that will finally make me happy, he was often heard to say. And I will have it. One day, a soldier rushed into the palace with news about a magical quilt maker who lived in the mountains. The king stamped his foot. And how is it that this person has never given me one of her quilts as a gift, he demanded. She only makes them for the poor, your majesty, the soldier replied, and she will not sell them for any amount of money. Well, we shall see about that king roared. Bring me a horse and a thousand soldiers. And they set off in search of the quilt maker. But when they arrived at her house, the quilt maker merely laughed. My quilts are for the poor and needy, and I can easily see that you are neither. I want one of those quilts, the king demanded. It might be the one thing that will finally make me happy. Here we see the king with all of his soldiers marching up. Well, the woman thought a moment. Make presents of everything you own, she said, and then I'll make a quilt for you. With each gift that you give, I'll sew in another piece. When at last all of your things are gone, your quilt will be finished. Give away all my wonderful treasures, cried the king. I don't give things away. I take them. And with that, he ordered his soldiers to seize the beautiful star quilt from the quilt maker. But when they rushed upon her, she tossed the quilt out of the window, and a great gust of wind carried it up, up, and away. And see, here's the quilt going up with the gust of wind. And if you look, you can see the red stars that are part of the pattern. The king was now very angry. He marched the woman down the town, down through the town, and up another mountain, where he had his royal iron makers shape a thick bracelet of iron. Then they chained her to a rock in the cave of Sleeping Bear. Once more, the king asked her for a quilt, and once more she refused. Very well, then, the king replied. I'll leave you here, and when the bear awakens, I'm sure he will make a very fine breakfast of you. So you see, here's the bear asleep. Later, when the bear's eyes were opened and he saw the woman in his cave, he stood on his mighty hind legs and gave a roar that rattled her bones. She looked up at him and sadly shook her head. It's no wonder you're so grouchy, the quilt maker said. You've nothing but rocks on which to rest your head at night. Bring me an armful of pine needles and with my shawl, I'll make you a great big pillow. And that's what she did. No one had ever been so kind to the bear before. So he broke the iron bracelet and asked her to spend the night. See, if you look up here at the top of the pages, you can see all the different way, positions that the bear was sleeping in on the rocks. Now, Although the king was very good at being greedy, he was very bad at being mean. All that night he could not sleep for thinking about the poor woman in the cave. Oh me, oh my, what have I done, he wailed. So he woke up his soldiers and they all marched in their pajamas up to the cave to save her. But when they arrived, the king found the quilt maker and the bear having a breakfast of berries and honeys. See? All the soldiers in their pajamas, sleeping with night gowns. Now, the 
king completely forgot about feeling sorry and became angry all over again. He ordered the royal island makers to build an island barely big enough for the woman to stand on her tiptoes. Once again, the king asked her for a quilt, and once again she said no. Very well, the king replied. Tonight, when you're too tired to stand and lie down to sleep, you'll drown. And the king left her alone on a teeny island. Shortly after he left, the quilt maker saw a sparrow flying across the great lake. A cold, fierce wind was blowing, and it did not look like the poor bird would make it to shore. The quilt maker called to him, and he stopped to rest on her shoulder. The poor, tired sparrow was shivering, so the woman quickly made him a coat from scraps of her purple dress. When he was warmed and the wind had stopped, the bird flew off, but he was very grateful to the quilt maker for what she had done. Soon, the sky darkened as the air filled with a huge cloud of sparrows, thousands of wings beating together. They swooped down, lifted the woman in their little beaks, and carried her safely to shore. See? All the sparrows and the quilt maker standing on the itty bitty island. Again, that night, the king could not sleep for thinking about the woman alone on the island. Oh my, oh my, what have I done, he moaned. So he woke up his sleepy soldiers again, and they marched in their pajamas down to the lake to set the woman free. But when they arrived, she was sitting on a tree limb, sewing tiny purple coats for all the sparrows. I give up, the king shouted. What must I do for you to give me a quilt? You see, she's sitting up there in the tree, making little purple quests for the sparrows. As I said, the woman answered, give away all of the things you own and I'll sew a quilt for you. And with each gift that you give, I'll add another piece to your quilt. I can't do that, cried the king. I love all my wonderful, beautiful things. But if they don't make you happy, the woman replied, what good are they? That's true, the king sighed. And he thought about what she had said for a long, long time. So long that weeks went by. Oh, all right, he muttered. If I must give away my treasures, then I must. And you can see all the way around the edges of the book, here's the king thinking and thinking and thinking really hard. The king went to his castle and searched from top to bottom for something he could bear to give away. Frowning, he finally came out with a single marble. But the boy who received it smiled so brightly in return, the king went back for more things. Eventually, he brought out a pile of velvet coats and went about the town, giving them to people dressed only in rags. All were so pleased that they marched up and down the street in a grand parade. Still, King did not smile. But you can see all the people in a parade marching with the new velvet coats on. Next, the king fetched a hundred waltzing blue Siamese cats and a dozen fish that were as clear as glass. Fish in the bowl over here.
Then the king ordered his merry-go-round with the real horses to be brought out. Children cried with delight and cartwheeled all around him. And just the smallest of smiles began to show on the king's face. And he was a wonderful horses. The king looked around him and saw the dancing and merrymaking and all the happiness his gifts had brought. A child took hold of his hand and pulled him into the dance. Now the king really smiled and even laughed out loud. How can this be, he cried. How can I feel so happy about giving my things away? Bring everything out. Bring it all out at once. Meanwhile, the quilt Maker kept her word and started making a special quilt for the king. With each gift that he gave, she added another piece to his quilt. So you see people dancing, and there are some of the blue Siamese cats dancing too. So the king kept on giving and giving. When at last there was no one left in town who had not received something, the king decided to go out into the world and find others who might be in need of his gifts. But before he left, the king promised the quilt maker he would send a sparrow back to her each and every time he gave something away. Morning, noon, and night, the wagons rolled out of town, each piled high with the king's wonderful things. And for years and years, messenger sparrows flew to the quilt maker's windowsill as the king slowly emptied his wagons, trading his treasures for smiles around the world. The king is out there giving things away. We see all the different places that the king visits to give away his gifts. It goes all over the world. There's people in the snow, and balloons, and people in the marketplace. Somebody where they had the cam the camel. We still see the king sinking. On and on the quilt maker worked, and piece by piece, the king's quilt grew more and more beautiful. Finally, one day, a weary sparrow flew into her window and perched on her needle. She knew then and there that it was the last messenger. So she put a final stitch in the quilt and started down the mountain in search of the king. Here's where she's sitting and working. And there's the tiny sparrow. After a long search, she found him. The king's royal clothes were now in tatters, and his toes poked out of his boots. Yet his eyes glittered with joy, and his laugh was wonderful and thunderous. The quilt maker unfolded the king's quilt from her bag. It was so beautiful that hummingbirds and butterflies fluttered about. Standing on tiptoe, she tenderly wrapped it around him. What's this? cried the king. As I promised you long ago, the woman said, when the day came that you yourself were poor, only then would I give you a quilt. The king's great sunny laugh made green apples fall and flowers turned his way. But I'm not poor, he said. I may look poor, but in truth, my heart is full to bursting. 
filled with all the memories of happiness I've given and received. I'm the richest man I know. Nevertheless, the quilt maker said, I made this quilt just for you. Sure enough, she's wrapped it around the king's shoulders. Thank you, replied the king. I'll take it, but only if you'll accept a gift from me. There is one last treasure I have left to give away. All these years, I've saved it just for you. And from his rickety, run-down wagon, the king brought out his throne. It's really quite, quite comfortable, the king said, and just the thing for long days of sewing. From that day on, the king often came to the quilt maker's house in the clouds. By day, the quilt maker sewed the beautiful quilts she would not sew. And at night, the king took them down to the town. There, he searched out the poor and the downhearted, never happier than when he was giving something away. See the king down there with the quilt rolled up and tucked under his arm. And that's the end of the quilt maker's gift. Jesus said, therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So just a quick prayer. O God of peace, in our disappointments and in our triumphs, let us rest secure in your loving arms. In our certainty and in our confusion, let all people rest secure in your loving arms. As we await a new day, let all creation rest secure in your loving arms. And now I'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We praise my Lord through our brother fire, through whom you brighten the night. Set us aflame with your love for the whole world. Praise and bless, bless the Lord and give thanks and may we serve him with great humility. Holy One, we bless your name and thank you for the gift of this day. May the light of the world refresh us and the hope of the world be our companion, that we may be the forgiving power of Christ in the world. Amen. So now just two questions about the story that we just read. I think the first one that we should think about is, why do we like stuff so much? Why do you like to have stuff? And then think as well about how does it feel to give things up? The king had to take a long time to get to the point where he felt 